Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'll be commenting uh, Shabro's 80% uh, world record run uh, for the Outer Worlds. Uh, you'll have a link to his run appear on the top right of the screen. Uh, Shadow's a speedrunner, he runs the Outer Worlds. Uh, he's run world's most records for most categories um, in the Outer Worlds right now. And he also speedruns um, Fallout 4. So um, you'll have a link to, to, to his video and a um, link in the description as well. Um, so I'm going to try to point out things that might be obvious to a lot of people, um, as well as things that might not be obvious to a lot of people. So some of you might know some of the more obvious things, um, but um, I've had discussions with people who are looking for pointers and um, I gave them a few simple uh, tips that they didn't know of, like shortcuts and stuff like that. Um, and it, it, those can be really, really useful. So <clears throat> obviously we run in story mode because it's easier. Um, our um, our setup is uh, below average, very high, below average, very high, below average, very high. Uh, we upgrade stealth and dialogue, um, and that's about it. So uh, you can download the latest um, uh, timer uh, on the. Um, you can find it on the Discord, um, and uh, it'll start automatically after the first frame uh, of the first load. So. Um, you can, um, right after this, there'll be a, a cutscene, uh, and you can start um, buffering enter. You can use enter to, to skip cutscenes, but you can start buffering enter before the, cut, the cutscene starts, um, which uh, Sharo does. And um, my guesstimation as to when you should start uh, buffering the cutscene with enter is pretty much right now. In other words, at least now for certain, when the screen is almost completely blank, you can start hitting enter to um, get the buffer um, complete. So as you saw right there, um, when the cutscene uh, showed up, cutscene is still isn't here, cutscene is here. If you look at the bottom right of the screen, the enter key is almost complete. I don't know exactly when he started pressing it, but you can start pressing it before. And when the screen is almost completely blank and you can barely see the window uh, with the sparks, uh, you can start pressing enter and you'll be sure you'll be buffering the cutscene. So he starts off by uh, dodging forward so he can gain uh, sprint momentum. Um, he runs straight to the log, dodges forward again, um, goes really close to the to the rocks on his right. And he's, got, he's going to dodge forward twice before the log right there. That's first time, second time, going to crouch, dodge, dodge forward out of the crouch. He's not going to dodge forward over the rocks. He's just going to jump on the rocks and go to the left. Now he's going to dodge forward again. Dodge forward again, two dodges. So here, he he strafes right because right here, there's an invisible wall. And he wants to jump over the, these rocks. But if he comes here uh, with an angle, he'll bump into the invisible wall and he'll land over here. That's because the way um, they designed the game is instead of for certain areas, instead of having complex rock formations and, and uh, collision, they just put twelve feet high, uh, twelve feet high walls, uh, so you couldn't pass over them and you'd bump into them. So the wall kind of extends right to approximately about here. So you kind of want to jump uh, right here, and you don't want to jump coming in from this angle, which Sharo does. Jumps over, lands right on the rock. Dodges forward, dodges forward again. Now he dodges out of his crouch again. So here he kind of um, uses his mouse movement to just loop around the um, the corner right there, and he goes straight forward. Doesn't jump over thing. Dodges forward. Now he uses uh, dialogue and. Um, dodges backward. So you can skip dialogue in the Outer Worlds by pressing either enter or space. Uh, you should s uh, use space when you want to dodge somewhere after dialogue. You should use enter when you want to fast travel because if you use space when you fast travel, you're going to jump and you can't fast travel when you, you're in the air, so you're going to lose a bit of time. Um, and if you use dodge, you need you only use it when you want to go somewhere. So right there, he wants to go backwards, so he presses S and uh, spam space at the same time. So he dodges backwards as soon as dialogue is complete. So he blows up the barrels, dodges forward. So here he's gonna wait just before being, uh, not just before, but not gonna jump immediately as TDD happens. He's gonna wait just a, maybe a second um, to jump. Um, and he's gonna jump through a good straight line, 
hug the log on his left right there. Hug the tree, not hug this tree, but hug this log. And right here, he's going to hug uh, this tree. And he's going to use, not a little trick, but he's going to be careful when going around uh, the corner right there. I might put this in order speed. Uh, because as I said, collision isn't always perfect in uh, the other worlds. And right here, you have a pretty big, lit, um, pretty large um, hitbox. So he wants to avoid this because if he goes straight, he, there's a, an invisible hitbox which kind of extends to here and he's going to bump into it and get kicked to the right. So he kind of goes around and the, what, what he's looking for is this rock formation. I mean, at, at least that's what I do when I, I, I go through this section. You kind of want to look for this rock formation. This You don't see this pointy thing in real speed, but you're kind of want to go around, look for this rock formation. And if you go just straight and you don't jump, but if you go just straight, you're going to bounce on this, bounce on this, and go to the right of this guy. So he doesn't, he doesn't jump. Well, actually, he bounces, just bounces on the rock. He jumps, which I don't do, and I didn't know he jumped, but he jumps, and lands right here. So we'll have another look at that in real time. So he dodged forward there, dodged forward. He strays just a bit. Doesn't jump. He does. He jumps when he lands on the rock. So this is a really tough. Um, so, sorry. I'll just go back, and just repeat what I just said to be sure everything's clear. So he goes straight. Doesn't jump. Lands on this rock. Jumps. Lands here. Just walks. I mean, runs to uh, this area. He doesn't. This is a really tough trick and I don't really know how to do it properly. But as you can see, he doesn't want to land here because there's, an, once again, an invisible wall which kind of extends to here. And if you do that, you're going to be pushed to the right. So he purposely lands more to the right than he maybe sh should or intuitively we think he should. Um, so he can land kind of over here. And what he's going to do is he's going to jump as soon as he, as he lands so he can get... Um, uh, speed boost uh, with his leg break. So he jumps in the air. What he's doing right now, just before landing, is he's spamming space. Um, I'm not sure he spams space, but what you want to do is you want to be jumping exactly when you land on the ground, and that's going to give him a speed boost instead of giving... Is it going to give him a leg break, but it's going to negate the um, speed ailment, and it's going to give him a, sp a speed boost. So he's going to jump, and as you can see, he's jumping way further than he should be. He jumps again, because he's, he's kind of bouncing and bouncing and bouncing, and after the second jump, he doesn't need to jump again because um, he's used... He's ex not exploited, but he's used as much of the momentum he gained from that speed boost as he could. So he runs to the ship, he doesn't jump on the ledge, he just goes straight up. Goes to Ada. Now here he does a very simple trick, um, and this is part of the easy tricks people can do to gain a lot of time. He moves his mouse and he gets it ready for his menuing. So where he wants it, see, it's right here. It's not, there's no perfect way of knowing it, but it's kind of easy, you know. Kind of memorize the fact that there's this small uh, indentation, put your mouse somewhere around the left end of it, and um, he keeps it here so when he opens his menu to pick up the perk that allows him to run faster, Cheetah, his mouse is going to be exactly on the word perk. So he can open his menu, click, and he'll directly be on the perk um, menu. So he goes through menu, and you saw his mouse was exactly on perk. So he can simply click and just move to Cheetah. So he presses Cheetah, and you didn't even see the accept hit bo uh, box, not hit box, but the accept box, because uh, in Outer Worlds you can, uh, can uh, accept when you have dialogue options like this one, like the one you should have, uh, but we didn't see. You can press E to accept, so he clicks, presses E. He doesn't use his mouse to go up and click on maps. He uses his keyboard, so he uses M. The shortcut for the map is M. Presses M, and the same goes uh, with regards to the E shortcut. Presses on Emerald Veil, vale and immediately press hits E, so he can accept fast traveling to Emerald Vale. So here he runs, we're going to run to, he's going to run to Geothermal. So you want to go right of this rock formation. Once you're here, jump. And um, just pass right of this rock formation, jumps over this rock. And to me, he's kind of aiming for this, um, like 
the, the left side of this this rock. So you can just go around, go around, uh, hug this, just go up. So he spams space because it's slightly faster. I don't exactly know why, but it's it's just a bit slightly faster. Goes right here, and once again. Um, so I'll explain that it's it's the same trick as um, as uh, he does. It's the same trick he does at the, on the starting of at the start. Sorry, of the um, just after the cave on the tutorial. Right here, he jumps so he can gain height, so he can get a leg break, and. Here, as he lands, he's going to press space so he can bounce and benefit from the leg break, benefit from a speed boost without actually getting the leg break. He's actually going to be faster than he would be uh, had he not uh, jumped. Um, and the reason he jumps before doing this is you can only benefit from this speed boost if you've jumped before landing. If you fall from a certain height, but you didn't jump, as far as I know, uh, you can't benefit from the speed boost from the leg break. So that's the reason why it's going to jump when he lands right here. So that on the second landing, he's going to get a leg break, but he can get a slight speed boost. So he jumps twice to, uh, because he's exploited uh, the, uh, the speed boost as much as he could. Going to run to this little corner here. Um, just as soon as he gets there, he's going to dodge backwards. And turn around. So, dodging backwards um, is helpful because it gives you, it gets you to um, your sprint speed immediately. You don't have to turn around and start running immediately, as in your as as soon as uh, well. Your movement in the air is as fast as it would be had you been sprinting on the ground. So, if you can dodge backwards and while you're in the air, turn your mouse to do a hundred degree turn, land while pressing shift to sprint. It would be as if you had been sprinting in that direction the whole time, whereas if you turn around <coughs> and um, a tur I mean stop, turn around and sprint, uh, you'll lose a lot more time um, than by dodging backwards and immediately sprinting, which is what he does. So here you kind of you have to know where to go. He got unlucky with that jump. It happened. He's, to me, he's kind of aiming slightly to the right of here, so he's going to jump over these rocks. To get the same speed boost, would he, he does on the leg brakes? Well, sorry, he does with the leg brakes, and he's going to run to uh, Edwater. So he's going to run to the closest point he can, which is somewhere around here. So you can buffer some movement in uh, in between loads. Uh, the easy way to figure out um, when uh, you can start moving is by uh, looking at the guy in the bottom right of the screen. As soon as he stops moving, the game's loaded, and you can press W uh, to start moving, or move your mouse around, or press M to open the map, whichever. So once again, same trick. He moves his mouse up here, so that when he clicks map, his mouse is really close to region. He just has to click on region, and then he goes, goes straight to um, geothermal. So he blows that uh, barrel up so he can fast travel on his way out. <clears throat> and he's going to Oh, the geothermal. So he does a, a neat little trick just after this loading screen. This, I've never managed to do this. He Apparently, I think he dodges forward. I think he must maybe hit the crane or the railing to get him just above the railing. But um, it, this is really difficult to do. And I, I've seen a lot of people waste a lot of time trying to get up that, get over that crate, me included. So it's a neat little trick, and it's good to know you can do it. But it's hard to do, in my opinion. Go straight to... Um, the terminal picks up the lotions, dodges backward. So when he dodges backward, you don't just want to dodge backward. He, you need to move a bit. You see, he, he moves his mouse slightly to the center so that he's going to dodge in a straight line. Because if you spam dodge backward right there, you're going to hit the wall. You're going to dodge in a diag diagonal uh, direction, and you're going to hit the wall. So here he does a great job at actually activating the um, terminals while being quite far. Don't really know how he does it. I mean, it's practice, but I can't really give you any tips as to that, as to <laughs> where to position yourself perfectly to be able to open to activate those uh, those levers without being uh, too close. Same here. He doesn't stop running. He manages to uh, activate it as he's turning. Opens the door, does a crazy job opening the the bar and the door as well. Once again, goes the perfect distance to, to pulling the lever, and he's going to run outside. So 
So here he's crouching um, to avoid detection and he, he crawls backwards um, so he can go straight back into the, the geothermal. So this trick has given a lot of people a lot of trouble, but it's really simple. It's a very simple trick. Um, all you do is once you once you get to the second like second um I wouldn't call it a post but second bar here or just before that you can jump you'll land in front of the door open the door and stop moving you do not want to move forward because that's going to alert the drone on your left stop moving and once the door is open you can run in if you spam forward in the door that's going to alert the drone who's going to detect you immediately so here he's going to um, interact with your terminal, 1122. He's going to dodge backwards, which is, and that's a great dodge. It saves a lot of time. And he's going to run outside, nothing particular here. Um, in my opinion, I think he's going to buffer some movement left. So as you can see in the bottom right of the screen, the guy stops moving, you can buffer movement left. Runs to the container, is, is far enough from enemies because he blew up the barrel. Um, and he's not in combat, so he can fast travel, and he's going to fast travel to Edgewater. He's going to immediately um, upgrade, up, upgrade his dialogue so he can get light to 40, and he's going to drop his items for duping. So what I said earlier about buffering movement, you can do with E as well. If you look at the bottom right of the screen, as soon as the guy stops moving his arms, just start spamming E so you can pick, it up, pick the lotion up immediately. So right here, uh, I have a trick that saves a split second. Um, it, it takes a bit of work to master, um, but and it's not a gargantuous time save, but it's it's optimal in my opinion. In order to drop the lotions, he needs to press X, then D, then E. X to drop, D to say I want to drop the maximum, and E to confirm. While he's pressing X, D, and E, or while you're pressing X, D, and E, what you can do is move your your mouse to the health icon right here, so that um, the next time you open your inventory, you can click immediately and you'll immediately go to this tab. So this is 25% speed, so it'll seem an eternity for him to actually move his mouse speed, his mouse around. But um, doing this at normal speed uh, is a bit difficult. But in my opinion, it's it's maybe a it's it's a bit faster. I think it's a bit faster than um, doing what he just did right there. So he spams his lotions. Um, runs to Edgewater and runs to read. You kind of want to, you don't want to hug this post because it has a weird um, hitbox. You kind of want to go slightly more to the right, left than you actually would. So when he gets to read, usually people try to jump over railing, do fancy, fancy stuff. He just goes around, goes around, and he wants to be in a straight line so he can spam, dodge forward, um, and um, put in half speed. He doesn't do anything particular. We used to try and jump, land in front, land somewhere special, but he gets tagged here, so he can just dodge forward and turn around. He doesn't jump over the barrel because that's slow. He picks up the um, um, power generator and fast travels to, uh, to the ship. So he runs up the ramp. <laughs> Goes to the ladder. He's going to drop in the power generator and uh, dodge backwards, jump over the ramp, and hop to uh, hop to Ada. So same here. He buffered. This one's pretty tough, but he buffered. You see, he buffered the enter key, so he probably used space to spam um, to spam dialogue, so that when the cutscene actually starts, he's a quarter of the way into the buffering. So here you always have dialogue. He's gonna spam through dialogue, go to go to the groundbreaker. Here you want to buffer movement forwards with the groundbreaker, at the groundbreaker. Sorry, we avoid Felix. Jumps up the um, stairs, talks to this guy. And he's gonna dodge right. So he's probably using spam. To dodge uh, to sorry, he's probably using space to spam dialogue and holding his D key so he can actually go right. Here he's gonna jump over the barrel. It's optimal movement, but if you mess the jump, it can cost a bit of time and he kind of he doesn't mess it completely, 
but uh, it slows him down just a bit. It's a tenth of a second, but um, if you get it perfectly right, it's better, but if you miss it, it costs you a bit of time. So uh, with regards to Gladys, a lot of people have trouble picking this safe without getting seen. I have that issue. I don't know why she always sees me. Um, the tips people usually give is uh, don't move until you actually have the item in your inventory. I feel that I do that and I get caught nonetheless. But that's the tip most people give. Um, I don't. I don't really have anything else to say. Uh, he does it perfectly. Some people do it all the time. Some people fail. I mean, I fail all the time. So I guess practice and a bit of a game game sense uh, works. So here he's gonna spam dialogue. Uh, once again, yeah, he's going to get his mouse ready so he could um, travel to fast travel to his ship. Going to go to Byzantium. So here you can, uh, there's a small... Um, trick that allows you to save just a bit of time by quick saving, quick loading. Once this character talks to you, she's going to say not so fast. Um, and normally, if you let her talk, she comes to she comes forward, talks to you a bit, and then she opens the door. What we do is we quick save, quick load um, when we hear her, so uh, as to skip her dialogue. But So you can see not so fast, he quick saved and quick loads immediately. A good... Um, a good area, a good way of knowing when to quick save, quick load, is you want to be past these two posts. As soon, you need to be a bit after these pa these posts in order to quick save, quick load safely. If you do it too early, she's going to trigger dialogue. If you do it too late, you're obviously going to lose a bit of time. So uh, not so fast, quick save, quick load. The door opens immediately. He runs to um, runs to the, the elevator and gets ready to pickpocket Percival. So he does a really good job here at uh, jumping at the exact right time to land on his desk, be able to crouch and uh, pickpocket him. Usually, I mean, for me, I need to jump on the desk, walk around, crouch, get in the right position to absolutely do this. Uh, he does it perfectly here. Once again, he buffers um, on this cutscene. He buffers enter. Once again, you can see his enter is almost complete. Well, it's halfway complete by the time we actually see the cutscene. Gonna fast travel to the ship to pick up the shroud because he needs the shroud for um, um, for um, um, what's coming up. Um, so once again, he uses his um, he's gonna use all his um, shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts to to use his men to travel through his menus. So if he wants the map, he's gonna print, press M. If he wants to accept something, he's gonna press E. And you'll never see him uh, click on accept, refuse. You'll never see him uh, open his map, then go to the inventory through uh, his inventory tab. If he wants to go to inventory, he presses I and so forth. So buffer movement left when you exit uh, HHC. Now you need to press E twice here, really, and he does it really fast again because you need to open the um, the morals thingy dingy the door, and then you need to actually buffer the uh, transition. So a lot of people have trouble here. He's he uh, it, it's a tough zone to be honest. Um, the best way of doing it, he does it here, is to take one inhaler, another inhaler when you're close to the door, so you can you're actually inhaling while you're lock picking. You need to be careful here because, as far as I know, if you stop the anim if the animation ends too soon, um, and you haven't actually finished lock picking the door, um, the lock pick will cancel and you'll have to restart. So he does it just in time so he can actually benefit from the inhaler while lock picking. Pick the locker. He doesn't go too far into the room as to pre stop actually prevent the enemies from um, hoarding the room and prevent and stop him from uh, exiting. Goes to the elevator, spams his, his inhaler, and as soon as he can, he quick saves, quick loads, so that he can um, um, avoid uh, not a cutscene, but for some reason, there's a guard who can talk to you through walls, and that avoids it. So he runs through this area. Um, he goes right here. Well, right. I mean, he goes. Uh, there's nothing extraordinary, but he goes right from of these pillars here. Goes to the door. <clears throat> 
enters this area, goes to the right of this guard. So here he does a trick which is actually pretty tough, uh, because you can't just jump over the railings. You need to be your your to, to help yourself with these little uh, boxes here. So he's going to kind of go into this corner, jump on the boxes, and I think he's going to either jump down or land right on this uh, structure. So he can land, fall down. He won't have a leg break and he won't be in combat, meaning that he's going to be able to use a terminal a bit faster. But this is, to be honest, this is a very tough trick. It, it sounds very stupid, but it's a tough trick to do this reliably and to do this well. So no leg break, he lands in front of the terminal, uses a terminal and can um, can just spam uh, spam dialogue to uh, get out, I mean, to pick up the demethyl and um, uh, go to the elevator. So he dodges forward into the cockpit, um, <clears throat> does a, a Conde's dialogue, goes to um, Phineas's lab, he, he uh, buffers moving forward upon loading. I'm sorry about the sirens outside. Since uh, Paris is on strike and France is on strike, traffic is horrendous, so Whenever there's an ambulance, it gets stuck in traffic for, for a while. But anyways, here again, he moves his mouse uh, to the top of the screen so we can fast travel. It's not absolutely perfect, but, uh, you know, it's, it's good enough. He gets to fast travel to his ship, goes to the help. Here, um, and what he, he always does um, on exiting... Uh, well, actually... Here it's a bit special because he um, had dialogue, but when you exit a uh, transition from planet to planet, you don't want to spam uh, dodge backwards immediately. What you want to do is walk slightly, but just wait for the visuals to appear, walk a bit, and then dodge backwards. I'll try to get you uh, transition. This one might might work. Oh, actually, to be honest, I don't know how he does that because when I spam dodge backwards, I I hit the wall. Don't exactly know how he dodges backwards there. What I usually do is I I kind I take a split second to to rectify my aim so that it's looking forwards, and then I dodge backwards. But anyways. No, oh, yeah, he does it there. I don't know how he does that. Maybe he's pressing A and S at the same time. I'm not exactly sure. But for movement, so here he looks on the gra at the ground, so as to not to not load the whole area and kind of um, slow down his uh, FPS and slow down his movement. Uh, this is just optimal movement. Hug the wall here. He stri strafes there. Open the door. Dodge backwards, get the key. So he um, he he doesn't do it because he's really fast. But if you're having trouble with your meter running out, um, what you can do and what you should do is when you open this, when you open doors, you shouldn't spam forward because it consumes your. Meter. You should stop walking. You'll see he do, he he spams forward because he's he's fast enough. But if you're having trouble with this, just stop walking. Your meter will stay put, um, and you'll gain extra. You you won't be wasting um, this guy's meter. Whereas uh, he does, you'll see it goes down, goes down. Whereas if you uh, had he stayed put, um, the disguise meter would not have gone down. So if you're getting caught by the um, by a bot when you pick up the key card and you're a bit slow, um, use that as a way to avoid getting caught. And it does it doesn't waste any time either. It's um, it's time neutral. And that's it. I think here you just spam one. And yep, you're done.
but uh, that's a world record run. So there's a lot of things that um, require a lot of work. Um, the whole starting area is really tough. Um, in my opinion, it's tough in the sense that he exits the starting he exits the starting area at uh, 55 seconds, uh, basically, uh, and most people who do it decently, I mean, there'll be, you'll see, TDD starts, you see 54, 55, so it, he starts at 54, 55, kind of exit this area, at 54, 55 seconds. Uh, you're, if you're not, your movement is it as optimal as his, you're going to lose 10 seconds here. But optimizing your movement through the whole start starting section is a lot of work. Um, so the, the easiest places where you can gain uh, time is through menuing. Uh, you need to uh, get the menuing down, moving your mouse at the right place during dialogue, um, knowing where you want to go and so forth. That helps. That saves a lot of time. In my opinion, getting like a 12-minute run is just about not making mistakes and knowing your menuing. Uh, getting less than 12 minutes is about improving your movement, uh, really getting the movement and the pathing down. So there are a lot of easy easy uh, ways you can save some time, uh, but if you want to optimize and really get a really good time, um, you're going to have to work on your movement and um, knowing when to dodge, when not to dodge, um, when to strafe, when not to strafe. And that's a point I didn't talk about too much in the video, but you really see it um, once again in the tutorial. He, Sharu doesn't strafe a lot. He uses his mouse to go places, but he doesn't strafe a lot. Right here, he's not strafing. He's using his mouse just to to, to um, direct his character somewhere. Here is probably one of the only I mean, the only areas where he strafes in the tutorial. And this, for instance, this, in my opinion, yeah, he's just turning his mouse, which is very hard to do because turning at a perfect ninety a ninety degree angle. Here again, he's not strafing because. At the end of the day, strafing um, is a bit slower than going, using your mouse to go exactly where you want to go, um, and using your mouse to create the perfect curve um, that describes exactly your movement, compared to strafing where where you go diagonally, right, left, right, left. Um, the diagonal is going to be tangent to the um, to the curve um, he's actually looking for. You're actually looking for so um, strafe less. Uh, learn the pa pathing. So, for instance, I've seen a lot of people uh, struggle with uh, with the passing pathing right here. They kind of run around. They go left. They go right. They go around here. It's really straight. It's really simple. You, you always want to go use the straightest line to go where you want to go. So, straight is you kind of know you, you want to go over here. So just go in a straight line. Go in a straight line. Don't strafe. Use your mouse more than you use um, A and D, and uh, that's about it. You see, for this whole section, he doesn't strafe. Let's go straight. So that's about it. Um, that's pretty much all I was able to say about uh, a 10-minute 10, 10 speed run. Uh, there's a lot to learn, a lot to work on. Um, I hope this was useful so, uh, for a couple of people. Uh, don't hesitate to join the Discord, um, the Outer World speed, uh, speed Run Discord, if you have any questions want any pointers or anything else. Um, and of course, um, please have a look at the uh, at Sharo's actual video of the speedrun. And he has a, a, a couple of other categories, which are fun. He does different endings as well. This is the dumb ending, but he does the board ending, the Phineas ending, and he holds world records for those as well. Uh, he does uh, the pacifist run, does a couple of cool runs for the Outer Worlds, and he also runs uh, Fallout 4. So be sure to check his, uh, his YouTube. Uh, his YouTube will be linked in the description. Um, so be sure to have a look at that. Uh, thanks and see you around.